Is this the apartment of uh, Mr. Zlicklack? The figure loomed in the doorway, and Zlicklack could see that they carried a large case, likely full of tools. I'm here to install your hyperlink box and related equipment. Zlicklack nodded, trying to suppress an urge to be nosy as he realised that he was talking to an earthling. The workman had apparently taken his nod as confirmation, and ducking his head briefly in a sign of respect, said, All right, I'll get this processed and then be on my way then. Don't want to cause you too much of a delay this morning. Oh, no, it's fine, the alien replied quickly. I don't mind at all. He was entranced by the form as the creature came into his dwelling. The earthling's body was smooth, long, and a deep brown that reflected the light here and there, with hints of wings beneath a simple covering on his back. Six long limbs deftly began unpacking the work bag they carried with them, and cutting tools were warmed up in preparation to chop into the side of his room to access the wiring within. Oh, hey, do you mind if I move the table here? It's a little bit easier and I can move back after I'm done. The earthling fully lifted up the matchbox he had converted to use a table, without any need for assistance, and carried overhead as if it was nothing, before settling it down on the far side of the room. He hadn't even disturbed the cup of drash juice that had been sitting on top. Ziklek looked closely for what he had always thought he would be able to see on Earthlings. But despite this surreptitious examination, while there was a small metal chip at the base of the creature's thorax, right below their head and mandibles, there were no other large attachments, no large pieces of machinery, implants, or anything else that would suggest a mechanical means of achieving uplift. Earthlings were well known for almost all being uplifts, but far more elegant than the few species of other worlds. A search he had run on his intracranial nedlink showed this earthling species in particular was referred to as a roach or cockroach. The cockroach must have noticed his staring and spoke up. So, I'm guessing your first time seeing an earthling in person. The alien blushed for a moment, realising he had been caught staring and admiring the installation mechanic, but nodded. Yes, I find the subject of uplifts to be a somewhat fascinating hobby of mine. Then he realised this may have been rude to say, and began stuttering an apology, until the cockroach gave a clicking sound. His translator showed a moment later, as this being a sound of reassuring approval. No, it's okay. It is a fascinating subject. A nerf definitely has perfected the art of it, apparently. Was there anything in particular you were curious about? I don't have a lot of time, but this job is going to take at least a quarter cycle. Trying to avoid stammering, Ziklak hesitated for a moment before saying, Most of the species have a mechanism or implant to achieve uplift on their chosen species. I'm curious, do you have one? I think all I see is the translator at your throat. The roach let out another chitter that was translated to a chuckle. Nope, it's all up here, he said one of his arms reaching up to tap his head. Turns out that after humans figured out how to make artificial intelligence, and after they found the number of neurons needed was actually pretty modest, they realised the most important thing was just making sure they're all connected just right. Took them a couple decades, but they were able to figure out how to prune and grow organic neural connections in order to achieve full uplift, using only a few hundreds of thousands of neurons. Ziklak stared in amazement. So, I'm guessing that will be dozens? Hundreds of species then that will be eligible. The cockroach interjected again, something that he was realising wasn't necessarily a gesture of rudeness, but more of a hard to stamp down instinctive habit of quick and decisive action. Almost all of them, turns out. There were a handful of the smaller insects and invertebrates that didn't quite have enough to meet the cutoff, but they figured out solutions. If you do see an earthling with a visible neural implant, those would be the ones to help supplement the smaller pool of neurons they do have. Fascinating, Ziklak whispered, more to himself than anything else. So I'm guessing you then must have been a close companion species to humans, in order to be uplifted, right? The cockroach made another click-hissing noise, that translated to a rueful smile but polite disagreement. We were less of a companion species and more of a parasite one, he said. The alien, noticing the earthling's reticence, didn't press on that subject any further, but he remembered a section he'd seen from his history texts. I do wonder if you knew about the Great Pause. The cockroach cocked his head, 
Not sure I know what you mean. Well, our text had noted that humanity, despite being a very promising species and offered admittance to the Council, only a few years after their species was introduced to the wider intergalactic universe, had turned down the position. Instead, humanity and Earth had gone almost completely silent for nearly a millennia. Everyone was baffled by it, as species are usually overjoyed and very determined to impress, when given such a prestigious nomination. Oh, I think I know what the context is for that, the cockroach said. You see, it was right about that time that humanity also figured out how to perfect neural rewiring. A famous quote from one of the lead scientists, a lovely old woman by the name of Dr. Winsayer was, We're not really doing something fundamentally new. It's the same yarn, but just a different sweater. Well, humans started uplifting more of their companion animals for sure. Dogs, cats, some particular types of livestock, that sort of thing. And humanity began asking, if this was something they wanted to continue, and only to continue if they felt the rest of their species would want uplift as well. And almost every single one responded unanimously, resoundingly, yes. So humanity continued over the years and decades reaching out to each new species, uplifting a handful, ensuring that they agreed that the rest of their species should be uplifted, and then proceeding to bring the gift of intelligence, thought and reason to as many of them as they could. The cockroach shrugged. Of course, there were always a few that were rather opposed to it, and humanity respected their wishes and left them in their natural state. But for the rest, humanity worked hard to weave axons together, restructured and optimized neural pathways with microsurgeries, adaptive drug therapies, and working with whatever unique biology a given species had to ensure that they were all able to benefit. Ziklak sat back, stunned. He stammered, But the amount of resources, that would have been... The cockroach clicked a sound that his translator translated as an affirmative. It would take the resources of most of the nations and millions upon millions of scientific experts for the initial uplift. But the public was in support, every step. Every new species building excitement and momentum rather than tempering it. Behind the scientists came armies of crafters, ready to create and adopt housing for those who no longer wish to live in the wilderness. There were sociologists, economists, and psychologists, ready to help those with questions about their newfound place in the world, and how to interact with others. The cockroach turned to Ziklak at this, a significant note of pride in his voice. Fully half of the other clutch mates in the brood I was laid in have gone on to pursue some philosophy degree or another. I'm one of the odd ones out in that I had a knack for electronics and mechanical engineering instead. The cockroach was nearly finished now, claws working furiously as they finished the final cuts and wells for the access line and control box. It was a monumental task, and continued to be a monumental task even with every set of hands and every additional mind added. That's why it took a little over 900 years. The alien sat back in amazement. So the reason humans turned down and left an empty seat on the most prestigious and influential government council in the known galaxy was to uplift every possible entity on your entire planet? The cockroach nodded, job complete, as he leaned back against the matchbox table. Yes, sir, but it certainly was a worthwhile project. For one, it meant that when Earth finally did join the council, it did so with an intelligent population of quintillions, rather than mere billions, and that's a conservative estimate. We also entered the stars with a huge array of viewpoints. Of course, there's always those non-corporeal species that we still have trouble relating to, but you would be surprised how many species are blinded by biases towards vertebrates versus invertebrates, ocean dwellers versus land species and such. Our congresses and meetings and minds were always hectic, occasionally dangerous, but unparalleled in their complexity and breadth compared to every other species and coalition we've yet come across in the Milky Way. But the thing that struck me and stayed with me were the stories. Stories of how humans had cared for a member of a species, giving them a good, long life with care and love and companionship. My species was not one that was well loved by most humans, and in many cases we were seen as a pest to exterminate. But what resonated with me is that even then, there were humans that saw us as something worthy of love and companionship and care, and raised us in homes and safety. We were not useful for textiles, for meat, for herding livestock, or for hunting. And yet, there were still humans who saw us as companions, 
to give us a good long life with love and care, for no reason other than the fact that we existed. I think what always sticks with me is that this story, the story for my species and of those who were chosen to be comforted companions, receive love and safety beyond what we would be able to hope to experience naturally. This story was repeated across almost every known species. Almost every creature on our planet had the same stories they could tell, of those among humans who would love them, and who would sought out their companionship no matter their form or use or any factor other than the fact that they lived on the same ball of rock at the same time as humanity. Humans considered us to be companions long before we had the mind to comprehend it, let alone their words to say it back to them. Ziklak nodded in sympathy, preparing a small cup of water for the earthling in his bottle cap sink. And then there was the wasting plague. The cockroach nodded, taking off the small baseball hat off of his chitinous head and clutching it to his chest. Yes, our planet would accept the mantle at the council less than two years later and had begun to make plans to reach out again when the plague had hit. I know that we've done research and found it was just an unlucky combination of genetics and virulence, but it almost makes you wish that someone was responsible so you'd have someone to be angry at. The cockroach sighed, leaning back and sipping on the water. But like a thunderbolt, humanity was driven effectively extinct. They didn't even realise it at the time, but most of humanity never got to see the stars outside their own system. Nowadays, almost all Earthlings have migrated elsewhere among the Milky Way, and travel between the stars with regularity. Humans spent so long, so much time and effort, making sure that we were elevated and prepared and cared for, that they squandered the time they didn't even know was limited. There's so few of them now that even attempts at cloned reproduction is rolling the dice with genetic abnormalities with every passing generation, and on some level it feels like humans are at peace with that. It's like when a family member is on their last breaths, and there's a calmness and a serenity. Not one born of bravery, but of a satisfaction of life well lived, and goals well accomplished. They gave up their chance so we could have ours. So now we're on our own, over a trillion species, and one homeworld. He snapped shut his workcase before putting his hat back on his head. Helping others like we were helped ourselves, so long ago. All thanks to a bunch of gangly pink monkeys, who sort to make some new friends.